Happy Monday, everybody. We have uh, a, a great strategy that I'm going to present to you in the, the video today. And then on our Wednesday call, I want to take some time to kind of discuss and strategize live about it. So I'm going to introduce the concept today, and then we're going to be talking about it on Wednesday. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, this weekend, which was unbelievably hot, uh, especially for our agents over in the Seattle area, crazy hot for them, and they're just not even used to it at all. But uh, this weekend, I watched a movie, Rocky Balboa, not a brand new movie by any means. Uh, yes, I am a Rocky fan. Uh, not a big enough Rocky fan to have watched it when it came out five years ago, but love Rocky, love the, the way he uh, kind of touches the core of humanity and really gets to just an inspiring character uh, for all of us, I believe, if you, if you take some, some of the pieces of, of that character in the movie. There was something that he said that struck me, and, uh, and I wanted to share it with you this morning and make that kind of an inspiring thing for you this week. But there was a scene where he's talking with his son, and his son is frustrated and angry at him and at life, it seems, and uh, Rocky really goes after him and says, you know what, it's time to stop making excuses and it's time to stop blaming other people for your problems. And he said, life hits hard. It hits harder than me, it hits harder than you, it hits harder than anybody. And it doesn't matter how hard life hits, what matters is how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. And that really hit me because it's true, no matter what you do in life, whether it's sell real estate, negotiate short sales, you know, work at a bank, I don't care what you do in life, life is gonna hit hard. There are gonna be things that, that hit you. Uh, Sid uh, Field calls it resistance. And there is gonna be resistance in your life. But what really matters is how hard you can get hit, how much resistance can uh, come against you, and you can keep your forward momentum. So this week, whatever life brings you, whatever roadblock and resistance you run into, just remember, how hard can you get hit and continue your forward momentum? That's what's going to define your success, and that's going to what, what's going to define you moving to the next level in your business and in your life. So with that said, let's jump into what we're talking about for short sales today. And we're going to be talking about pricing and multiple offers. A couple weeks ago, I uh, sat in a meeting with a, an agent, a very successful real estate agent out of Phoenix, Arizona, who does a lot of short sales. She had, Her team does close to 100 short sales by themselves, or at least currently have about 100 short sales that they're negotiating uh, on their team. And she had uh, shared a pricing and multiple offer strategy that it's very, very similar to what we have taught in our Excite Price system uh, with a couple of different tweaks. And what, what I want to do is bring, again, kind of the concept out here, talk about some pros and some cons, and then Wednesday I want to really dive into how to practically apply it for those of you that feel like it might work for you in your market. So the basic is when she receives offers at the beginning of a, a listing, so she, she agrees with our Excite Price system of bringing, you know, starting mid to low where you have comparable sales and properties, even though you may or may not get offers at that price, you know, not doing the uh, fire sale approach. And I think most experienced agents in short sales understand that the fire sale approach just is counterproductive and, and doesn't get what you need. So at the point she starts to receive offers and keep in mind in her market, she does not have to place her property contingent or pending when she gets an offer or there's ways that she structures that uh, offer to not have to do that. When she gets an offer, even if it's a really low offer, she uh, processes it and begins to submit it to the bank to get things started. So very similar to our accelerator offer. Basically it is her accelerator offer. It begins moving things forward, even if it's really a, a low offer. What she does not do is she does not counter anyone at the very beginning of the process. Ultimately, she doesn't know if buyers are even going to be around by the time it closes, which again is a concept that you need to capture and grasp as a, as a short sale real estate agent, is that just because you have an offer number one or an offer number two, don't count on those being around when you close. You need to continue to stack your offers in your pipeline. So she doesn't counter anybody. She just lets everybody's offer come in as it is and begins the process, moving things forward. 
then when she gets an approval from the bank, she does what she calls final and best to everyone that's currently around. So what she does is calls everybody that she's had an offer on and says, hey, are you still, is your buyer still interested in the property? If so, I need them to come in with their highest and best or final and best offer for us to present to the bank. The approvals come in and uh, our, uh, the bank is, appro is approving the short sale and we need the highest and best offer that your buyer can do. So she does that to everybody. Basically she, basically, she does a big, huge blanket counter at the time that the bank is creating uh, the approval letter. Then she can select the highest and best offer and most favorable to her seller, present it to the bank to get the approval letter and close. So here's some pros and some cons. Some pros, obviously, you can potentially keep some buyers on the hook longer if you're not countering them at the beginning, simply because you're not potentially frustrating a buyer with multiple counters. Anytime you get another offer in, that's higher, going back to everybody saying, hey, can you up your offer because I got a new offer at this price. She waits basically until the end of the process to do that to everyone at one time. So that could potentially create contention with a buyer if you're going back to them multiple times saying, hey, there's a better offer, do you want to up your offer price? Waiting until the end and doing it one time. Um, second pro is that the highest and best offer is the one that actually gets approved rather than working a specific offer um, because you have an approval with that offer just taking it rather than looking at any other offers that might be in, in line. So and again remember the bank does not own the real estate so the, the seller can determine what buyer and what price they want to sell the property at. They do not have to present every single offer that comes to them because that those offers may or may not be favorable favorable to the seller and the seller is the one who owns the real estate and the seller is the one who decides who they're going to sell it to. Okay, some cons. If you get a low offer early in the process and you haven't really worked your Excite price system, um, you, a potential con is that a BPO can be triggered and happen before you get down to a price that's, that's realistic. Now, she agrees even after that early process or early offer is received and the process begins that she keeps stair-stepping her price down. Remember, she does not have to put her, her property contingent or pending on the MLS. So she can continue to kind of zigzag her pricing even while the bank is processing that listing. So I really think that this strategy is primarily applicable if you can, in your market, have a way or you can come up with a way that you can keep your property active on the MLS while this, these offers are, are moving forward. Uh, another potential con um, is time to adjust the approval. What that means is once you get an approval letter, so there's the first offer that you're working and let's say the bank actually approves that offer. Well, if the bank approves that offer and then you go back to everybody and say highest and best, then you're going to have to submit potentially a new offer to the bank and it could take a couple weeks for the bank to revise their letter and get it approved. I know it sounds ridiculous, even if, especially if it's a better offer, uh, but sometimes that's just how it works. The banks are very busy. They have to get approvals from certain you know, investors or management or someone to sign off on getting a new approval letter. So some of the bigger banks, Countrywide for example, can take a couple weeks for that approval letter to get uh, signed around. So those, those, those are some things to think about when uh, looking into this strategy. And again, on Wednesday, I want to talk a little bit more about this practically, how it would apply to you and some of your specific markets, and, uh, and make sure that this is a strategy that you use properly. So anyway, I'll talk to you all on Wednesday for our strategy call for uh, this month, and uh, have a great week. And uh, remember, it's not how uh, hard life hits, it's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.